So I've gotten a number of questions about installation of the software and uh, modification of the software, people wanting to make changes, and thought it would be worth taking a few minutes to go through uh, how that's done. Uh, I'll focus on the GitHub site. Uh, one addition is I put this sketch descriptions. Uh, I'll, I'll build them out better later, but wanted to get something up. Uh, it was a very good suggestion, you know, can you at least put something up there that describes what they are? Uh, so these are the sketches that go with the motor shield. These are for the microcontroller. Uh, the Glove Nano and Nano 167 are new ones. Uh, again, thank you to Michael for, uh, Michael's the one that wrote our Buzzboard Random. He also wrote the Glove Nano Random. Uh, and then I also have the, the motor shield library listed here. So, a little bit improvement there. Uh, as I mentioned, we now have a Glove Nano and a Glove Nano 167. I actually haven't used to run these, uh, but they are a random pattern, uh, if, if that's what you want to work with. Um, I think the one thing that we can all agree on with Parkinson's is it's a very personal disease. What works for one may not work for another. Try something different. Um, so if I go into a sketch, you'll see it shows me the sketch. Up here on the raw button, if I right click and save link as, it will download the, the sketch as a .ino. And then all I have to do is open it and off I go. So that's how you can get a sketch out of GitHub easily. If I go to the Motor Shield library, you'll see it's a zip, so I just get the download button. Uh, so a number of folks have asked, you know, can I modify this? Can I, I make changes? And, and of course, I mean, as I just mentioned, PD is very personal. Try different things. Different different code gets different results. Not everything works for everybody. So I'm going to start with uh, with uh, Michael's code here, talking about the random. Uh, you'll see at the top, finger on time. This is the the pulse time of the the motor, so the time the motor will be on. Finger off time. This is the pause between pulses, and then the frame off time. And this he has eight by one sixty six. This is the that pause. So you get the frame pause. Off you go. Uh, so if you want a shorter pulse, you can change this. A longer pulse, you want to shorten the pause time, lengthen the pause time. The the gap between. This is where it's done. If you make a mistake, if something gets broken, don't worry about it. Go back to the GitHub site, download another copy, write it over, and go again. You, you really can't hurt yourself. If I go to the buzz random, you'll see very similar. On time 167, off time 66, 88 by 166. I do want to point out this include afmotor.h. This is what's looking for that motor library, uh, and few have had issues. So in the Arduino library, it is expecting something called libraries. And when you unzip that AF motor, it will create this directory. This afmotor.h is what is the file being linked to with that include statement. So that, that's what is pulling that together. So that is the randoms. <clears throat> I'm going to move over to um, where am I going? Motor Shield 167 here. Okay, uh, a bit different. So as you recall, we had motors one, two, three, and four: uh, index, second finger, ring finger, pinky. <clears throat> the way this one works. This section is what's important. Timer is the, the amount of time that the, uh, the motor will be turned on, pulse time. These pins, <clears throat> as you recall, uh, 
one I just said index, second, ring, pinky. This pattern of a number comma space determines what the pattern is. So ring finger, second finger, pinky, index, index, and on. The 13s are the pause in the middle. This is what turns that little light on on the board. And so you add more of these in, it will add more of this length pulse to the center. You take them out, it'll shorten. You can put as many in here or as few as you want. Uh, there is a limit in the Arduino, but it's it's very high. So if you want to make this, you know, 128 or 200 or whatever makes you happy. However many numbers are here, you need to, to make this <coughs> pin count match. What pin count does is there's a, uh, a, a series of statements further on where it runs through the pins up to that pin count. So... 0 to pin count less than, so 31, <clears throat> and that runs through all of these numbers in the array, and that's what determines the pattern. So you want to make it longer, you want to make it shorter, this is where to do it. As I mentioned on the other, uh, if you make a mistake and something gets screwed up, just re-download it from GitHub and try again. Uh, one question that comes up a lot, <clears throat> there is no pause in this code. And the task code calls for 100 millisecond pulse, 67 millisecond pause, 100 millisecond pulse, 67, and then the, the pause in the middle. And when you're working with $350 actuators, uh, you, you expect them to turn on and off within a couple of milliseconds of when they're commanded. And that, that's a reasonable expectation. Um, actuators are very much like a, uh, a speaker for an audio system. And, and they respond on and off very quickly. We are using what are called eccentric rotating mass or ERM motors. And they work a lot like the motor in a hairdryer. So there really isn't a good um, uh, document detailing the, the specifications of the inexpensive motor. They're very good information on the, the 15K motors. And they say that uh, the spin up time to max spin up is 70 milliseconds and a maximum spin up of 90. So from the time you turn that motor on, it's gonna be 70 milliseconds before it is spinning at full speed. Now someplace between zero and 70, you will get to there, you're putting enough energy in the finger for efficacy. Where that is, I don't know. Uh, and I, I really don't know how to measure that. Um, so what this code does is it assumes <clears throat> that you're going to have a period of that pulse that's going to be spin up. And so that is the pause. The, the time that it takes for the motor to come up to speed is what provides the pause. So that's why you don't see a pause uh, in, in the code I put together. Um, that's the logic. doesn't make it right. just makes it mine. Um, but that, that's the reason you don't see that. Um, uh, a note on, uh, on, on ERMs versus actuators, uh, there is another class of motors called LRA, uh, linear resonance actuators. They're very much like um, what uh, the, the Stanford glove uses. The electronics are, are much more complex, uh, which is the reason I, I went with this. Um, I, I will state that I'm working on something with a, a product from a company called SparkFun uh, that has an Arduino, uh, Uno or Nano, um, with something called I squared C that holds the promise of uh, a buzzboard or a glove with no soldering. But, but I'm selling futures there. That's still being worked on. So if you want to modify the code, that's the place to go. This is the uh, the motor shield. If you go down to the uh, Nano code, you will see it is very much the same, same author, same stuff. <clears throat> the difference here is, uh, as you recall, when we built it, index is three, second finger five, ring finger seven, pinky is nine, um, same number, 32, but the pins are different. So if you're modifying this code, you need to stick with the, the actual direct drive pins as opposed to the other code that, that has the motor, um, the motor number. 
so that's a quick overview of uh, how to install the code, uh, how to customize the code to your needs. Uh, one other item that, that I've uh, come across in, in my travels here. Uh, this is a, a screenshot of a device from Amazon. As you recall in my uh, earlier videos, uh, my helping hands are, are quite old. Uh, the, the magnifying glass with the little clips. Uh, it's probably the same design that Thomas Edison used. Um, I came across this one, and it is um, uh, obviously much more modern. <clears throat> What's important about this is not that it has four, but that it has two clips. And so what I've been doing, and I'll, I'll try to put together a video of, of what I'm doing with it. Um, but I take two of these clips, and I put the wire in one and the motor in the other. And this allows me to bring them very close together hands-free so that I can solder freely. If I do need to, to bring the motor in a little bit, I can grab hold of this piece, which is a much larger motor skill than holding that tiny motor on a tweezer, and I can guide it into place while I solder. And of course, it comes with a magnifying glass and a, uh, a flashlight. So uh, this is a product off Amazon. It's got a model number there. It's sold many places. Uh, but I'm, I'm finding it much easier and, and much faster to, uh, to build the, the fingers, put the motors on. Uh, so that's a quick overview of uh, how to download the software, how to modify it, and uh, a little bonus round on uh, some improvements that I'm making in the, the finger build. Uh, I will try to pull together a, a video uh, on using this thing and, and how it does simplify, particularly... Uh, for those of you that may have some tremor issues, surprise, surprise. Um, so God bless, uh, good building. Uh, I hope this brings great benefit. Uh, I do appreciate, by the way, the, the emails of people that are, that are getting benefit and, and people that have had issues. And, you know, we made some software adjustments that, uh, uh, that have, have helped. So um, have a great day. God bless and uh, keep on.